All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question double ended strings. Now, this is uh, on surface a dynamic programming problem, and uh, yeah, it is indeed a classical dynamic programming problem, but I don't think that's what was expected from the contestant. Like, uh, this is a div 3c question, and they were just testing uh, how well are you with your fundamentals, right? You, and you are not just mugging up the solutions. So, uh, the constraints are set in a way that you can code up a brute force itself. If you don't know what I'm trying to say here is like forget it. But uh, the main takeaway from this video should be that uh, always focus on the fundamentals and don't think about uh, what pattern will be applied where and so on. But focus on the fundamental knowledge and you will be, to, you will be able to solve it. Now, of course, I'm not going to touch dynamic programming in this video because frankly, uh, a person watching this video is not expected to know that. and this question also doesn't expect you to know that. Okay, so enough pep talk. Let me just quickly summarize the question for you. Uh, what we are given is we are given two strings A and B consisting of uh, lowercase Latin letters. So just A like A to Z. That's what we are given. And there are some operations defined. So what are these operations is uh, you can delete first or last character, right? So you can either delete first character of this A, last character of this A, first character of this string B and last character of string B. So these four types of operations are defined. And after each operation, of course, a string A or B may become empty. Fine. And what they're asking is, uh, find the minimum number of operations for which you can make the strings A and B equal. All right. So four types of operations are defined. So either deleting the first character from A or deleting the last character from A or deleting the first character from B or deleting the last character from B. Four types of operation, right? What you want to do is you want to minimize the number of operations for which you can make string A and B equal. Okay, so let's approach the problem from the first principles and uh, see uh, how can this problem be approached. So in the input, we only have two strings given A and B and uh, we want to output minimum number of operation that can make the string A and B equal. Okay, and important thing to notice here is uh, the strings are not very big, right? They are just at most 20 size. Even test case are just 100. So that's one thing. And in practice, the strings don't need to be of equal length, but it actually doesn't change the equation even if they are of equal length. So to explain you, I'll take them to be of equal length. It doesn't really matter here. Okay. So yeah. So how are you going to approach this question? You want to uh, remove as less characters as possible in the end, right? So minimizing the operation means uh, you want to uh, remove as less characters from both the strings as possible from start and end and make both the strings equal. Right, so you can uh, remove some characters here, 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 here. Let's say this I'm randomly doing this, right? So, randomly removing some characters and make sure that uh, whatever is left, whatever is left uh, should match, right? You want to minimize the number of operations. So, what is your best bet? Your best bet is uh, keep the longest matching substring among them, right? So, what I'm trying to say here is let's say if there is some ABC here, uh, ABC, ABC. And there is some ABC, ABC here. And this is the longest matching substring of both of the strings. You should be able to try to preserve these two, right? So what I'm trying to say in other words is you try to keep their longest possible match uh, as it is. Then it automatically ensures that you are removing as less characters as possible. I'll repeat myself again. So what I'm trying to say here is let's say uh, there are some 10... Uh, like 10 length substring here from A which matches to a 10 length substring from A and they may not be at the same place. So these 10 characters might come at the end. But if you keep uh, this longest possible substring that is matching between these two intact, effectively what you are doing is you are remo removing as less characters as possible overall. Right? You try to uh, make them equal in any other sense, you will always uh, bleed more characters. Right. So if you think about it, uh, it's not very difficult to see. Right. So if you are keeping the longest possible match among them, you're of course bleeding as less characters as possible. Right. So, yeah, that's uh, one observation. Uh, what is one observation that I talked about? Keep the longest possible match. Right. Longest possible match. Longest possible matched substring. The sole reason is we are being greedy, right? We want to remove as less characters as possible. If you want to remove as less characters as possible, you just keep the character, uh, keep the substring 
which is longest all in all uh, find the longest common substring among these strings right so the longest common substring let's say this part and this part is overlapping and then you remove rest of the part right you remove the rest of the part and if this is the let's say let's call this longest possible substring to be of length l what number of characters you have to remove from this a you will have to remove mod a minus l number of characters and from this b you will have to remove mod b minus l this mod a and mod b are lengths of strings a and b right so what effectively you are doing is you are removing as less characters possible if you keep the if you find the length of longest common substring among among these two strings now finding the length of longest common substring is a classical uh, dynamic programming problem however however just look at the constraints uh, a brute force can also work so what i'm trying to say here is uh, for a given string of length n you know that there are order of n square substrings possible now we have discussed it so many times but if you want a quick refresher uh, there are n sub like n substrings of length 1 n minus 1 substrings of length 2 n minus 2 substrings of length 3 so on and so forth so it will be like sum of n natural numbers so order of n square substrings fine so all in all if i do a pure brute force that is i find all the substring of this a guy it will be 400 right and uh, for each substring i am going to look out for that in b b in the worst case can go for just 20 and uh, to find whether this guy is a substring or other string it's again a order of m plus n operation so you can consume it to be around uh, let's say one more 40 operation right so 20 plus 20 worst case 40 operation and uh, you have to do it for all the test cases 100 test cases so what does this number comes up to be uh, if you think a bit here so this is what 16 into 1 e 5 right so this is very well uh, doable right uh, you can do anything uh, which is some order of 1 e 7 and you are only doing till uh, 1 e 5 so this works right if you are a lead code guy you will think like how is this possible because <laughs> we are effectively coding a order of n cube solution right so n square into n so yeah but fine if we are very well in the constraints as per competitive programming so this can be achieved and yeah that's what was the point of this video implement a brute force for longest <laughs> common substring and your job is done i'll quickly uh, explain the flow once again during the implementation walkthrough but yeah that's that for this question okay guys so time for the implementation so the question can be summarized into two two things we want we want to find the length of longest common substring and uh, our answer will be uh, remove all the characters from a apart from those uh, in the longest common substring and remove all the characters from b apart from those longest common substring this will ensure that uh, we will have to do minimum number of operations right so my idea will be i'm going to enumerate uh, all the possible substrings of the string a and i'm going to check whether the string is present in b or not and if there is a match i'm going to update the answer so i'll initialize my answer with the worst possible case the worst possible case is when this lcs is zero longest common substring is so it is like this case here right so there are no strings so to make both of them equal you will have to make them empty in that case your answer will be empty so that's the worst case now so yeah i initialize my answer now what i'm gonna do is uh, there are various ways of enumerating the substrings but the one that i'm gonna follow is let's say i have this string a1 a2 uh, a0 a1 a2 and so on three so on so what i'm gonna do is uh, i'm gonna start from this a0 this is my first substring then uh, a0 a1 is my another substring then a0 a1 a2 is my another substring so on then uh, a1 is my next substring so there will be like from all in all n types of substrings starting from a0 right and there will be n minus one substring starting with a1 so that's pretty simple right and then uh, that's what i'm gonna do right so you'll get it don't worry so i'll have to go through each and every character i0 i equals to 0 i less than m okay then uh, what you want to do is uh, first consider just one character from it that is just a0 then uh, consider in the end worst possible case m characters right so a0 till a m but of course for even you will only go till you will only consider in the max m minus i characters so for even you will only consider at max m minus one characters because that's what you can do right for even you are going to start with one character then two characters then three characters so on and so forth right so in this way i'm ensuring uh, that uh, i'm considering all the possible substring right so Oh, like how do you get the substring first, right? So how do you get this a substring? When you simply use a substr function, a dot uh, substr, the starting character is i, a0, a1, a2, a3, so on. 
and how many characters do you want i want j number of characters first one character then two characters three characters so on and so forth for the first guy uh, in the worst like in the maximum length substring that i can get is of m length for the second guy the maximum length substring that i can get, get is of m minus one so on and so forth right so this will make sure that every time you are here you get a substring a valid substring of e now what you want to do is you want to find this substring in b so you'll do something like this b dot find a substring you are going to find this substring here and if it is not equal to string and pose so this is actually a minus one right string and pose i guess you already discussed it so if we don't find if there is not a match then this find is going to return string and pose but if there is a match uh it will be the starting index of the first match that's what it will be so if you are here of course there is a match so you have to calculate operations now right so what are the operations um remove uh, j number of characters remove j number of characters from m why because you are considering a j length string here right for j equals to 1 you are considering a 1 length string for j equals to 2 you are considering a 2 length string j equals to 1 means this guy right j equals to 2 means this guy so you will have to remove m minus j like you will have to remove j characters from the first string fine and how many characters do you have to remove uh, from the another string of course j right <laughs> removing j characters from here you are removing the same number of j characters uh, from the b string this will be the number of operations you are going to consume and i'm going to update my answer to minimum of answer and uh, operation that's what i'm going to do so yeah that's that uh, i'm enumerating all the possible substrings and if there is a match that is this is not equals to string and pose i'm going to update the number of operation like calculate the number of operation and then i'm going to update the answer right so automatically uh, after this thing ends uh, this answer will have uh, the optimal answer then in the end i can just print it i forgot one thing here uh, i have to initialize mn as well right so m is actually length of a and uh, n is length of b okay length are just like they're not c plus as functions but it more of like wrapper like i have defined a hash define is a dot size and b dot size so this seems to be working i'll quickly submit it it works uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one